In this video, I want to talk about the most important rule you need a master in order to get an A-plus in organic chemistry. And I know a lot of people struggle in organic chemistry, but once you truly understand this rule, all the other principles you'll learn about in organic chemistry will begin to make sense. So let's imagine we have these two electrons. We know electrons have negative charge. For example, every single electron has negative 1.6 times 10 to negative 19 coulombs. So every electron has this much negative charge. However, let's imagine this electron has all that negative charge localized in this small volume, this small region of space. However, let's say this electron has all that negative charge delocalized, spread out over a larger volume. So if we had this kind of situation, we know this electron would have a high charge density. Both these electrons have the same amount of negative charge. However, this electron, the charge is within a small volume. So that's the same amount of charge over a smaller volume that would give us a very high negative charge density. However, this electron has the same amount of negative charge, but a larger volume. So therefore this electron would have a lower charge density. So the most important rule you need to know for organic chemistry is to realize high charge density, to have a very densely charged region of space, is high in energy and very unstable. However, low charge density, to have delocalized low charge density, is low in energy and very stable. So the key idea is that nature hates high charge density because it's high in energy and unstable. And nature always tries to take high charge density and to delocalize that charge density to essentially create a lower charge density. Because when we decrease the charge density, when we delocalize that charge and spread out that charge, that's lower in energy and that's more stable. So nature always tries to accomplish this. So if you haven't taken physics, don't worry about this next part. But if you have taken physics, you know the electric potential energy of a system is determined by this equation. And essentially what this equation tells us is that the closer charges are to one another, the more energy is in the system, the more electric potential energy is in the system. For example, if you have two electrons very close to one another, then that system will be high in energy. The, the system will have a lot of energy in the form of electric potential energy. However, if you have charges far away from one another, the system will be low in energy. The system will have low amounts of electric potential energy. So that's what this equation tells us. And again, this is physics, so don't worry about it too much. But the point is, what this tells us is that the closer charges are to one another, we would have higher charge density, which is higher in energy, so that's unstable. So that explains why high charge density is high in energy and unstable. So nature always tries to go from high energy systems to low energy systems. So how does it do that? Well, in this example, we have all that negative charge in close proximity with the high negative charge density. However, if these charges spread out, so these charges were further away from each other, the system would be in a lower energy state, which is stable. So nature loves lower energy systems because they're more stable. So we can see that in the distance and how distance affects the energy in the system. So let's try an example. Let's say we have this carboxyl group. In this carboxyl group, this oxygen has a formal charge of negative one, which essentially means this oxygen has the negative charge of one negatively charged electron. So in this structure, all that negative charge is localized on this oxygen. So all that negative charge is localized on this oxygen in this small volume, this small region in space, so that's a high charge density, and we know that's unstable. However, this compound can go through resonance. And when it goes through resonance, these lone pairs of electrons scooch down. So again, these lone pairs of electrons scooch down, forming a double bond. And when we do that, we push these pi electrons up onto this oxygen. So when we go through this resonance structure, we form this compound. And now in this compound, now all that negative charge density is localized on this oxygen. So now this oxygen has all that negative charge density. But again, now this oxygen has a formal charge of negative one, so that's the charge of one negatively charged electron. So that charge of that one negatively charged electron is now localized on this oxygen. So now this oxygen has all that negative charge density, so we have a high charge density, and we know that's unstable. However, in reality, we're going to form a, a hybrid resonance structure. So what does the hybrid resonance structure look like? Well, it looks like this. 
So notice the difference between this hybrid resonance structure versus these resonance structures. In this resonance structure, that formal charge of negative one, that charge of one negatively charged electron was all localized on this oxygen. So that's a high charge density that's unstable. In this resonance structure, that formal charge of negative one, that charge of one negatively charged electron was all localized on this oxygen. So that's that negative charge of the electron in this small region in space. So that's also high charge density. That's also unstable. However, in this hybrid resonance structure, we get to take that charge of that one negatively charged electron and spread it out over a large volume, this large region in space. So again, it's the same amount of charge, but a larger volume. We get to delocalize that charge over a large volume. So that's a lower charge density and that's stable. That's more stable. The lower the charge density, the more stable. So that is why we go through resonance in the first place. Again, in this structure, we had high negative charge density. In this structure, we had high negative charge density. However, when we go through resonance, we form this hybrid resonance structure with low charge density. That charge is spread out over a larger volume. That's lower charge density. That's lower in energy and that's more stable. So that's why compounds go through resonance. It's more stable. It's a lower energy state because it's lower charge density. So let's try another example. Let's say we have this carbon anion with this negative charge. And let's say we have this carbon cation with this positive charge. What's going to happen? Well, we know they're going to react with one another. This carbon is going to nucleophilically attack this carbon electrophile. So they're going to chemically react and we're essentially going to form a bond. These two carbons are going to form a bond with one another. However, why? Why do we go through this chemical reaction in the first place? Well, notice in this structure, we have a formal charge of negative one. So that's localized negative charge density that's unstable. In this structure, we have a formal charge of positive one. So we have localized positive charge density. So that's unstable. Remember, whenever we have localized charge density, whether it's positive charge or negative charge, whenever you have localized charge density, that's high in energy and that's unstable. So we have high positive charge density, so that's unstable. So we have these two unstable structures with high charge density. However, what happens when they chemically react with one another? Well, this negative charge will destroy this positive charge. So these charges will destroy one another. So now we'll have no charge density, which is stable. So when they chemically react, now there are no formal charges. So we have lower charge density, near non-existent charge density. So that's stable. And that's why molecules react in the first place. In organic chemistry, most of the time when chemicals react, when molecules react, they react to destroy charges because when they destroy charges, there's lower charge density and that's stable. So again, that's why chemicals react. So again, it's that same rule. In this example, we have high negative charge density. That's high in energy. That's unstable. In this structure, we have high positive charge density. That's high in energy. That's unstable. If they react, these charge densities will cancel out one another. So now we'll have no charge density. So that's low in energy. So that's stable. So that's why chemicals react. And again, whenever nature has an opportunity to lower charge density to destroy charge density to decrease charge density it will do so so in this example it can react and it will lower the charge density so again the key idea is whenever you have localized charge a certain amount of charge localized in a small region in space in a small volume you have high charge density and that's very high in energy and that's unstable so whenever we have the situation nature tries to find a way to delocalize that charge, to take that charge and to delocalize and spread it out over a larger volume. Because when we do that, now we have a lower charge density, which is lower in energy and that's more stable. And that explains a lot of phenomena you see in organic chemistry. For example, why do we do resonance? Again, in this structure, we have all that negative charge localized on this oxygen. However, when we go through resonance, we get to spread out that negative charge over a larger volume. So now we have that same amount of charge, but spread out over a larger volume. So that's a lower charge density. That's low in energy and that's more stable. And this rule explains most of the phenomena you see in organic chemistry. So there are really just a few principles you really need to understand in order to master organic chemistry and to get an A plus. 
These concepts are a little tricky. However, if you understand these basic concepts, I promise you will master organic chemistry and every reaction, everything you see in organic chemistry will make sense through the lens of these principles. So I have a link of videos that go over each of these principles in more detail below. I have a link of those videos below.